everyone, I'm Ari here with Rachel and we're your hosts for the Merry Writer Podcast. We are on episode 149 and we're asking, why do writers procrastinate? Before we dive into this topic, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening if you haven't already. And if you enjoy the show, please do share it with friends and feel free to write a review. So let's start with what is procrastination? Because I'm sure there's somebody out there who doesn't know. Procrastination is the act of delaying doing tasks until the last minute or even past the deadline. It has often been defined as, and I quote, form of self-regulation failure characterised by the irrational delay of tasks despite potentially negative consequences. Consequences. Can't say it properly. When it comes to procrastination, there is surface level and deep level. So surface level stuff is like, I don't have time and I'm stuck on this part of the task. These are considered surface level as it doesn't really take much to get out of them. Such as you just need better time management, maybe delegation, support from others during brainstorming, or maybe giving feedback can often fix these kinds of surface level issues. Though usually it does take us a while before we actually ask for help work on our time issues, say no to taking on too much. You know the drill. I'm sure you've done it too. Before I go on, I'm going to ask you, are you a procrastinator? Yes, I am. I am a really, really bad procrastinator. I will say that I'm not quite a procrastinator, but it kind of depends on the thing, whatever the project is. Like there are certain things that I do not procrastinate on them. And then there are other things that I just that it kind of depends on the day for me. So I just want to like throw that out there. Like sometimes procrastination, like it's an issue that everybody faces at one point or another, but some people are more procrastinators than others. But then on the other hand, like some people work better being a procrastinator. Just saying that like my sister's a huge, huge procrastinator, but whenever she does things at the last minute, she does them well and they still get they get done like that's that's the only way they're gonna get done is if she does it at the last minute and it does work for her so I just wanted to throw that little little bit in yeah that that's kind of how I am I remember doing my story and I had like months to do it and I did it on the day of the deadline in like four hours (laughs) to write 7,000 words and I freaking did it but yeah I I just managed to drag it out for a long time I get bored easily and I often drift off and I kind of jump from task to task yeah I'm I'm with you sister on that that's that's how I work I yeah and for some reason it works for some people I don't I don't know what it is about that like sense of urgency for our brains we're just like our brains just seem to think this has to get done now or like we just trick ourselves into thinking we have more time than we realize but Oh, well, I will say also for me too, I think procrastination, a big reason why I procrastinate sometimes is like just mental blocks. Usually when I have like a bout of depression, like nothing gets done, which that sounds like totally obvious because if you have depression, you know that it's very difficult to do anything, let alone creative projects or work or what have you. But I have noticed that that seems to be like, the majority of the case for me when I procrastinate on something, it's usually because I'm having a tough mental health time. So with that said, we'll go on to talk about the deeper level reasons for procrastination. And we'll just talk about a few of them. First, I want to talk about overwhelm, where you are overwhelmed by the amount of work needed to undertake for the project or the level of complexity. And I I mean, I know overwhelm all too much. Like it's a good friend of mine. I often give myself too many tasks and then I overwhelm myself because I feel like I'm not going to be able to complete them all on time. Therefore, sometimes the procrastination happens accidentally because I have too much on my plate and I give them all deadlines to be around the same time. And there's just not enough hours in the day for me to get it all done on time. So there are certain projects that I take a look and I'm like, okay, which ones do I want to work on first versus which ones take priority? And then you just kind of need to pick and choose your procrastination at that point. But there are times where you just have like this one big project that you got to work on and you just get so overwhelmed by what it is and the amount of work that it has to go into it. And maybe there is a tight deadline and that stresses you out. It kind of spirals from there because once you start feeling overwhelmed for one thing, it just keeps going and going until you need to, you almost kind of need to take a step back and rethink about it, which kind of sounds backward because by taking a step back, you're procrastinating further in a way, but sometimes you do need a break. 
And, you know, if you're overwhelmed and you get too stressed out, then yeah, sometimes that's needed. I think overwhelm is one of those things where it can often just create this block. Nothing else can get in. It's like a freeze and you just stir and stir and stir at the problem. It's like looking at a million options and trying to pick one. But there's so many, you have to look at all of them and you have to decide. It's like, if you have this one, is that one not better? It's almost like it's a brain shutdown. <laughs> so yeah, stepping back is really good or even just like focusing in. But oh my God. Yeah, overwhelm, not a good one. I don't like that. It's it's definitely too much information in the computer brain. They're just like, you know, you're now in safe mode because you can't cope. Right, exactly. And another way you can combat overwhelm, I think, is if these deadlines are self-made, just extend them. A little bit. I know that uh, that's another backwards way of thinking because like we don't want to procrastinate. And I feel like a way of procrastination is by pushing things further back. But sometimes it is needed. There is a fine line. But what I'm going to mention is one we're probably all aware of, which is that fear of failure. Oh, great. And it actually has its own cool word. And I am going to butcher this, but it's atticophobia. But yeah, is that. And apparently it is an irrational and constant fear of failure, persistent worry of what other people say or think. And I think we've all had a fear of failure at once, twice, all the time. And that does definitely slow people down to stop them from letting go of their work, from finishing their work. It's like anything. When you fear something, what do you do? You get out of the way. You go away from the giant spider or or whatever it is that's scaring you. And you, you sort of walk away from it and make yourself feel better. And the problem is... Failure is just one of those things you all have to live with. And it's easy to say, it's like, everyone fails, everyone goes through it. It's the whole point of a fear of failure is it's irrational. You know that, yes, you might fail. And yes, you might succeed. And even if you fail, it's not the end of the world. But at the same time, that stupid part of your brain that grabs onto irrationality and then holds on for dear life is really, really stressful. And I think it stops a lot of writers and is a brilliant excuse for procrastinating because it's so much better to not face your fear and go and watch some more Netflix because that's what I do when I have really bad bouts of fear of failure I watch too much Netflix you're, you're absolutely right though because first of all I didn't know that word existed and I'm not going to try to pronounce it because I couldn't pronounce complexity in our notes but the fear of failure I don't think it's irrational because it's something that we all feel and I feel like if it's a universal feeling that it's not technically irrational because failure is a real thing you are going to fail at some point sorry to burst your bubble but you are going to fail many many times it may not necessarily be with the same project well yeah it might be with the same project but you know with with anything and i saw her on the internet because this is a good source the internet is a great source i saw her on the internet that somebody said that you know when they would get home from school their father always asked them what did you fail at today it was never, how was your day? What was your favorite part? It was like, what did you fail at? And it just got them really to think about anything that they do in the day. Like if they got back a math test and they didn't get the grade they wanted, maybe maybe they got like a C, which isn't technically failing, but it's obviously not an A and that's what you want. You want a good grade or you want a better grade, I should say. And the father would basically say, if you didn't fail at anything today, then you didn't learn anything because we all learn from our mistakes. We all learn from our failures. And if you get something right the first time, every single time, you're technically not learning anything. You're not. And if you're not learning, then you're not growing. Um, so the fear of failure is actually kind of a good thing. It definitely does cause you to procrastinate and it can like make you freeze up. So in that sense, it's not so great. You know what? Everybody goes through it. So if you do start having the feel of failure, then you can just be like, you know what? I'm not the only one that thinks this. So to get myself through this, I'm going to go sit on the couch and watch some Netflix. <laughs> Bringing it back around. There we go. <laughs> I think with the irrational part, I think it comes from like, if you fail to cross the rope bridge, with the crocodiles underneath and it breaks or you fall off the edge, that is a rational fear because you were going across a really dodgy road bridge. If you fail, <laughs> yeah, it's like you're going to get eaten by crocodiles. That's not a nice way to go. However, if you fail at a maths test, if you fail a job interview, all right, yes, I suppose if it's a job interview, it's like kind of like, oh my gosh, if you get a job, you don't have the money, blah, blah, blah. But it's not like, a, it's not the worst thing in the world. And I think that's where the irrationality comes from. But what you said was perfect about the father who asked about like, what did you fail at and how failure is growth. The problem, 
I found, because when I was growing up, there was, and this was everything, there was parents, teachers, neighbours, jobs, bosses. The concept was, if you fail at anything, you are useless, you are wrong, you've done, you know, you've, you've done the worst thing in the world. And we put such pressure on this, like, oh my God, failure was the worst thing you could do. Whereas what you said about how failure happens, everybody fails at something because no one goes, you know what, I'm going to be a pole vaulter and does it straight away. They're going to hit that bar, they're going to fall. No one is going to do it first time perfectly. And if they do, then you're going to think there's some sort of weird alien and they're probably just going to get tested on because that's just bizarre. No one's going to trust that. And yet we still treat people who make mistakes, who fail like pariahs not all the time we are getting better but i'm still seeing it where like parents yell at their kids for not getting a's parents yell at their kids for making a mess of something and it's hard you know i'm in my 40s and i still get massive anxiety if i make mistakes i worked in offices you make mistakes you make mistakes because someone gives you the wrong information you make mistakes because you wrote the information down wrong you make mistakes because you misread something or just because you had a really bad day and you weren't really paying attention you're gonna make mistakes and I I don't think I don't think I was ever yelled at by one of the bosses in the bigger companies that you know if you made a mistake it could be really bad like really bad and I never got yelled at but I had this huge anxiety and it would make it would like stop me from telling people I've made a mistake I mean I've got better because obviously you have to admit when you've made a mistake you have to admit when you make a failure because otherwise it's just hiding it and covering it up but it was so ingrained in my upbringing that you don't fail that I I still carry that with me now. And I think that's this fear. We've still got this like almost childhood fear of like, what are people going to think? What, that my book is crap? Well, they're going to think my book is crap. What am I going to do? Write another one and hope it's better. As long as I'm happy with it, surely that's okay. But we make it out like it's the it's like, oh, we're going we're gonna to get put on a bonfire and set on fire because our book is so bad. No, we just might not get sales. It might get ripped apart in reviews. Is that the possible worst thing in the world? No. Can you grow from that and be better? Yes. But it's really hard to say that to yourself, that inner child that's just like freaking out about failure. That's an excellent point. Yeah, I didn't think about that aspect of it because there there are many, many people who grew up in a family that had that mindset or they're in a relationship with somebody that has that mindset. So it's a tricky one. Because it's something that we all feel and it is, it's, it's true. Like if you fail or you make a mistake, in most cases, it's not the end of the world. And Ari's right. If you do make a mistake, you do have to own up to it and like admit it. And I think that it's a hard thing to do, but doing the right thing is never the easy choice. Um, and I think that kind of ties in with um, our next point here is perfectionism. And perfectionism is when you worry about not being good enough. And of not being able to complete your task or not being able to complete it at the level that it needs to be done at. And you just try to make it perfect, perfect, perfect. And you're never satisfied. And I see it in writers all the time. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I'll I'll use books as an example because this is a podcast about writing. But I could say this about literally any creative project that I've ever worked on in my entire life. But for books especially... How many times have you edited that novel? How many times have you rewritten that chapter? How many times have you stared at that one specific sentence and said, there's something fishy about this. It's not quite right. Every beta reader I've given it to, they've laughed at this sentence. They've said they've loved this sentence. They said it's a good sentence and that the character who says this sentence It's right up with their character development and their personality. But you know what? I don't like it. It's not good enough. And then you just get yourself dug into this like rabbit hole and you just keep going on and on. And it gets to a point where you feel like you can't edit your book anymore, but there must be something you missed, right? And that kind of, it ties in with the whole fear of failure is that you realize you need your book to be absolutely perfect because when you do an eventually publish it if you get a one-star review oh my god that's horrible that's gonna be the end of the world you're never gonna make it ever like anywhere you're gonna be disowned and you know and and some people actually do feel that way I'm not like trying to make fun of anybody here because it's they're all true feelings they're all valid but the whole point that I'm trying to make is that like you can't keep working on one thing for so, so long, because eventually that becomes procrastination because of your fear of failure. And then you end up overwhelming yourself due to that fear of failure. And it all just spirals out of control. And yeah, been there, done that. 
and I'll be there again later. Totally felt cold out then. Totally felt cold out. I called myself out too. It's not just you. And I probably got a bunch of people to click out of this episode as soon as I started talking about that because they don't want to feel called out. And you know what? That's fine because the truth hurts. You know what? It's true for all of us. We're all in the same boat and nobody's steering, but that's okay because we're all together. We're all in this together. And you know what? We'll get to that finish line at some point because we're talking about procrastination. So that finish, who cares about the finish line? We'll get there eventually. I just like we said, we're all in the same boat. And I thought, yeah, the Titanic, we're all going down. It's yeah, I know, really. Thing. Yeah. I'm thinking that that's my sister and I, we're often in the same rowboat and we each have an oar, but we're, we're rowing in the same direction. So the boat's just going in circles. We know what the issue is. Do we fix it? No, <laughs> we're just going to keep rowing in the same direction. I think the problem with perfectionism, and again, I hold my hand up as someone who is obsessed with perfectionism. And even though I know it's bad, I know it's bad. I am 100% self-aware. Doesn't help. The problem is, especially with writers, is we look at a book that's been published, edited, proofread, copy, copy edited, developmental edited, gone through a million rewrites, covered beautifully, marketed, and they go, my novel's not like that. It's like, have you finished it? Well, no. Well, of course then. It's literally doing paint by numbers and and putting it up against Mona Lisa and going, mm, it's not as good. No, it's not as good. That's stupid. And again, I'm not yelling at anyone. I'm yelling at myself. I know that. And yet I still do it. I still look at my work and go, wow, it's not as good as those novels I really love that have been through a million rewrites and have four editors look at them <laughs> and all this. Of course not. But it is so hard to get out of that perfectionist mindset of being, it's good, just let it go. And you can mess with it too much. Like Rachel said, you can, you know, everyone could be like, oh, it's great, it's great, it's great. And you could tweak it and tweak it and tweak it a bit more until you're happy and actually make it worse. So, oh, bad. Yeah, it, I think sometimes you need like a deadline, like, right, eight rewrites. You've got to stop now. You've just got to stop. Just let it go. But I also think it comes from like, like age and wisdom because you need you need a thick skin. If you're doing anything, frick it, you need a thick skin in life. Let's be honest. It's good to be sensitive. It's good to be a soft soul. I have no issue with that. I will seriously cry at all sorts. However, you also need to be able to put that thicker skin on for certain things. And I admit that as you get older, it is a lot easier to have that thicker skin. If I had done what I do now when I was younger, I would probably have just collapsed and, and like this my sensitivity level would have been like, oh, it's too much, I can't do it. And I just I'm glad the social media wasn't around when I was younger because I think it would have just crushed me. And I would have just been like, right, I'm not writing anymore. I had it with other people who kind of looked down at the idea of being a writer or being creative, you know, it doesn't pay the bills, which is true, it might not, but still, who want to do it? But I could just about manage that. I could do that kind of like, oh, screw you, I'm going to show you. I don't think I could have done it against the wave after wave of social media and the internet of other people pulling you down because that unfortunately happens even in the writing community. So yeah, you need a hard, tough hide in this. And I'm not saying you have to wait till you're in your 40s. You just have to be aware you're going to need it. And that helps to stop the perfectionism taking over, I think. My opinion, just a thought. And with that, I'm going to move on to the next one, which is uncertainty. Worrying about the outcome. We don't like to be uncertain, people in general. And you can end up automatically assuming you're going to fail, which is like negative repeating thoughts. Maybe you're going to miss a deadline. We convince ourselves we are trying to do something beyond our abilities, so we just don't do it. We just stop. And we don't like stopping because we feel like quitters. So what we do is we procrastinate as a means of not doing it, as a means of quitting in a not quitting kind of way. That's bad because we're we're already projecting them. Well, what if? What if I fail miserably? Well, if, what if it doesn't work? Well, what's the point in doing it? And it's very similar to the fear of failure. It's like, well, yeah, but what if you succeed? What if you fail and then learn from it and succeed the next time? But yeah, uncertainty is a, a, a kind of a shitty one because I feel like it's it's when the negative thoughts, maybe from other people, maybe from yourself, maybe from everything, just kind of circle and sort of worry you down to the point where you don't even want to try. So then procrastination sets in quite deep. Yeah, it kind of makes me wish that I could predict the future and kind of know, am I doing this for a reason? And is it all going to work out in the end? Or am I just wasting my time? And I'm here to tell you that no, you are not wasting your time because whether it works out for you or not, it's about the journey, not the destination. And if you 
got something out of it, if you learned something, if you made new friends, if you just enjoyed the process of it, then it worked out. You did not fail and it is perfect for you. Okay. I'm going to write a book of affirmations. That, that's my uh, that's my motto for 2023. I'm trying to be more positive, more affirmation e. Yeah, that, that's a word. That's a good word. I'm going with it. But yeah, I, I do agree. Uncertainty is, it's a pisser. And it's just one of those things that it's like you constantly ask yourself, as Ari said, well, what if this? What if that? What if it doesn't work out? But on the other hand, yeah, what if it does work out? You're going to get something out of it regardless. Like I said, I mean, even if I end up not publishing my books or if I end up like publishing them and they completely bomb, well, I did enjoy writing them all these years. And during that process, guess what came of it? I started a podcast with one of my best internet friends. So there we go. I got something out of it. You know, it did it did have a purpose. And so that's what you need to remind yourself when you are feeling uncertain. You need to remind yourself about why you started in the first place and, you know, hone in on that purpose. We procrastinated by starting a podcast. Oh, we really did. How many episodes, guys, have we been like, yeah, we haven't done this, but we would like to. But if we did do it, here's our advice. (laughs) Oh, my God. Why do you guys listen to us? I'm going to blame you because the podcast was your idea. I could be writing right now. Instead, here we are recording. So when I asked you want to start a podcast, you said yes, but you really meant no, right? Absolutely. I I totally meant, I said yes, because I was like, wow, what a great way to procrastinate further. (laughs) So I'm going to ask you guys this, which one of these do you guys connect with? Because these reasons for procrastination can like really manifest in ways such as like helplessness and anxiety. I mean, hello, anxiety, my old friend. Uh, and you did you just feel powerless? The indecision and feeling out of control. I feel like my comments on this whole thing is out of control right now. I really apologize in advance. I've had two cups of coffee today and I'm running on little sleep at the time of recording this. So let's talk about how to beat procrastination. Yeah. Okay. First, you got to acknowledge that you're procrastinating. How do you do that? Seriously? If you sit there and you have a project in front of you and you see the deadline and you tell yourself and don't deny it, we've all done it. If you tell yourself, oh, I have plenty of time to get this done. And then you push it out of the way. Boom, you're procrastinating. (laughs) If Netflix says, are you still watching? And you click yes, you're procrastinating. Yes, absolutely. Yes. (laughs) It's not always easy, though, is it to acknowledge that you're procrastinating? It is a hard one. Because you, sometimes you're researching. Yeah, see? I do that all the time, especially with my books. If I procrastinate on the actual writing or the editing part, I'm like, well, this word I use a lot. Let's go to the thor- the thor- That's another word I can't pronounce. I can't pronounce the thorus. The th- the, thorus. Yeah. The, <laughs> the opposite of the dictionary. You go on that website <laughs> and like look up other vocabulary words. Preferably ones that are easy to spell and pronounce. <laughs> I can't spell that word either. That's another thing. Exposing myself here, guys. Yep. So once once you've acknowledged you are procrastinating and that you are wasting so much of your time, you need to ask yourself why you are procrastinating. Because there is almost always an underlying reason of fear that is making you delay the task. And this is important because writing should be fun and enjoyable, mostly. If you're avoiding it and delaying something that you would usually enjoy, you need to work out why. The best way to do this is to write down how you're feeling and dig into why you feel that way. For example, I'm feeling overwhelmed because I can't move on without fixing this huge plot hole, but it means I'm going to have to do a lot of rewriting in the early chapters. That can manifest as kind of an overwhelm because you know, wow, I'm going to have to do so much more work. I was really happy with those early chapters, but I messed up with a plot hole or I didn't do my outline properly. And it's a larger task to have to kind of go through. But just by acknowledging what it is, it will help. Because sometimes sometimes you're just like, oh, no, I'm just procrastinating. Or, oh, I, I'm just, I've just got an issue. But it's like you need to identify what the issue is. And then it might even be more than one issue. It might be that you're struggling with the plot because you don't actually like the project. And maybe that just means you've run the wrong project. But maybe it's that kind of concord fallacy where you've put so much work and time and energy into this project. You can't give up now. And sometimes it's like, yeah, yeah, you can. Sometimes it's better to just walk away and start something else than keep putting 
time and energy in something that you haven't got your heart into it especially because sometimes it might come back if you've been working on a piece for ages put it away work on something else if you've lost your heart for that two years later you might come back and you might feel it all over again i'm not saying obviously constantly jump between projects but yeah i'm talking that if you've been writing something for ages and you have lost the heart and you're writing it because you've been writing it for so long and you feel that you can't let it go maybe you've talked about it to everybody and people are asking you about it and you think oh i can't it's like, yeah you can yes you can you know, I'm going to go the opposite here and just say that's actually how I found out that I was procrastinating on writing because I've been wanting to be an author since I was 10 years old. And I started this project, got bored of it, started that project, got bored of that, blah, blah, blah. And then I started George. I started my mystery novel. I would always end up coming back to it. Even when I started getting bored with it, I would try another idea, get bored of that. And instead of going to a completely different idea, I always went back to George. And that was kind of how I found out that, you know, just my writing in general, I was procrastinating because I didn't find a project that I was passionate about. And as Ari said, if you're procrastinating on something, it might be that it's just not the right time for you to be writing that particular novel. It's probably a fantastic idea. Maybe you'll write it in a, you know, a couple of years from now. But in this moment, your brain might be wanting to try something else. It might have other ideas that haven't quite surfaced yet. So you got to play around with that. I mean, overall, when it comes to procrastination, once you figure out why you're procrastinating, you got to work around those issues. I find that some of the best ways to do that is to just make yourself a to-do list, take the big picture of the project and break it up into like steps. And then you can probably break those steps into baby steps. Give yourself tasks and subtasks and then tell yourself, okay, I'm going to get one task done today and make it a baby step. Do a baby step task. And if you get that done and you feel energized and invigorated to keep going, get another baby step done. If you get just one thing done and you're like, oh, wow, that was so tough. I, I'm really, really missing my Netflix right now then you know what? You got something done today. You accomplished something. Any progress is progress. So yes, you sit down on your couch and you watch that Netflix. Such bad advice. It's great. Watch more Netflix. Great advice like this. Yeah. Thing is, we've been through so many of these mistakes. We're even in some of these mistakes currently. So that's why we talk about them. Because we know we've been there. We are there often. Too often. It's very upsetting. Absolutely. Top-notch experience right here. <laughs> Putting it on my resume. Experienced procrastinator. I can help you get through it tomorrow. <laughs> okay, with that said, let's just do a quick recap. There are different types of procrastination. You've got your surface level, basic stuff that if you just push a little harder, you'll probably get through it. You might need to think about your time management, reach out to other people, do a few little things and you can probably get through it. Then you've got the deeper stuff, which is, you know, your overwhelm, which can be tied to things like anxiety. It can be fear of failure, which we've all had. And it's just hard to kind of get past those feelings that have often come from things we've learned from the past. Let's be honest. Perfectionism. Too many of us have perfectionism. Uncertainty. I'm sure some of these have resonated with you. If you haven't, tell us because we'd love to know who isn't affected by procrastination. And then obviously thinking about how to deal with procrastination acknowledge it like any other addiction acknowledge that you are not doing things you should be doing find out why you're not doing those things and then make an action plan about how to do them treat it like a house you want to clean your entire house maybe it's an absolute tip it's massive that's going to be quite overwhelming but if you make a little list and you break everything down to i'm going to clean out the junk drawer that's how you've gone from i need to tidy the entire house to i'm going to clean out the junk drawer that's what you sometimes need so small small step and reaching out for support let's ask you guys do you procrastinate and if so what do you do to get past it let us know your answers in the comments so we can have a chat remember we release new episodes every wednesday next week we'll be discussing tips for writers to get podcast interviews to ensure you don't miss it hit the subscribe button on your way out and as always thanks for listening to the mayor writer podcast see you next week this podcast is brought to you by writing distractions we're stalling on our whips very appropriate. The music, titled Inspired, is by Kevin MacLeod, licensed under Creative Commons 4.0.